Hey. Hello. <laughs> What's that? Hello. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a blue <laughs> blue tongue skink. skink. Hey buddy, we sleeping. Right. So you know one of the weirdest things about like the whole transition to YouTube has been like trying to speak to this camera in my room and pretending there's somebody here that I'm having a conversation with. Just feels pretty weird. Anyways, I just want to thank everybody for watching the videos as of late. So I'm going to try to upload videos at a pace of maybe two to three every month, if that's feasible. I don't want to get burnt out, that's for sure. So this week's Dragon Tales is going to be about another one of Australia's iconic lizards. Uh, I know what you're thinking, bearded dragon, right? But hey, I already did a video on that, so you can check it out. It's probably going to be in the description or something. I'll find a place for it. Uh, moving on to another one of Australia's iconic lizards. I am talking about the Eastern Blue Tongue Skink. Yep, did a Dragon Tales on it and it's coming up right now. We have an incredible night out highlighted by this golden tailed gecko and the Eastern Brown Snake. I was ready for another day road cruising reptiles across the Brigalow Belt. This quiet little town where I've been staying at the last couple days has been awesome so far. They've got the whole Wild West vibe going on. And oh, here's the little caravan I've been bunking in. Today's target, as you'll probably know by the title of this video, was the Eastern Blue Tongue Skink. And with most herbs out here, the most productive way of finding them is generally a game of road cruising. We spent most of our morning trying to outmaneuver the areas hit by rain while trying to find these skinks by the road. With cold winds blowing and me freezing my butt off, we stopped the car and switched strategies. Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh my god. It's a blue <laughs> blue skink. skink. Hey buddy, we sleeping. I was literally shaking when he found this lizard. Like no flipping way this man flipped off some wood and found this chunky lizard just chilling underneath. But I really shouldn't have been surprised though. Blue tongue skinks live in areas just like this. The thick underbrush provides excellent cover for these lizards from predators and there's also lots of rock and wood that they can hide under for shelter. These skinks are pretty common here but that didn't change the fact that I finally had a chance of having a personal encounter with another iconic lizard that's super popular in herpticulture. Ever the opportunities I took this chance to get a closer look at this reptile. I was surprised by how smooth its scales were compared to the coarse sandpaper-like skin of a bearded dragon. And unlike that pancake, blue tongue skinks have a sleek, slender, snake-like body. They are largely silverish to grey in colour, with black stripes running across their back and tail. You might be wondering, how an animal like this defends itself against danger. After all, with stumpy feet like those, blueies aren't going to outrun most predators. Instead, they'll pretty much puff themselves up to appear bigger, while hissing and opening that huge mouth of theirs to reveal that signature blue tongue. Potential predators would likely avoid such an aposematic defense giving this lizard a chance to escape. And if all else fails, these skinks have a pretty nasty bite. Blue tongue skinks are omnivores that feed on snails and beetles. With a diet like that, you can bet they have really strong jaw muscles to crush shells. Not an animal you'd want to get bitten by, despite their otherwise docile disposition. Speaking of docile, it's one of the reasons why these lizards are so popular in the reptile pet trade. They have pretty good temperament and are tolerant of handling from what I've seen. Blue tongue skinks can live up to 20 years though, so make sure you guys are ready for that commitment before picking them up as a pet. 
It's such a privilege though, being able to see reptiles in both their captive bred and wild environments. We get a fresh perspective on these animals' habitat and natural behaviours that we won't get otherwise by just reading up care sheets online. I really recommend anyone who keeps this iconic lizard at home to make a trip down to Australia someday to see these animals in the wild. I guarantee you won't regret it. As for me, it'll be a couple more years before I'll be able to make a return to the hobby. So in the meantime, I'll continue traveling the world to see all these amazing reptiles before I'm anchored down again raising my lizard family. On the next chapter of Dragon Tales, the road cruise continues with a surprising amount of herbs despite the inclement weather. We found more lizards, frogs and snakes. So I'll see y'all in a couple weeks.